What's something that most people won't believe, but is actually true? Like tortoises breathing through their butthole, or the largest desert in the world isn't made out of sand, and how you must have drunk pee from an actual T-Rex at one point in your life. True story. This is a Komodo dragon that reproduces by laying eggs, just like regular reptiles. But females in captivity have been known to reproduce by parthenogenesis without the need for sperm from a male Komodo. A virgin birth, if you will. These animals are the coolest creature. Their skin is made of a sort of a chainmail bone. But a virgin birth is not unique to the Komodo. Fish, reptiles, and even sharks have been known to give birth or lay eggs without males. Some species even don't have males. For instance, the whiptail lizard and the Amazon mollyfish are all females. Just like in Jurassic Park, life uh, finds a way. Orcas eat moose. That's it. Simple as that. This is an orca. Orcas live in the sea. And this is a moose. And orcas love to eat moose. It usually happens when the moose swims into the ocean. They are excellent swimmers. This lake is called Moose Lake because moose swims in it. And they also swim the cross between islands. There's some really good tasty moss down there underwater. And these moose love to swim and dive to get it. That's where they get to meet the biggest butthole in the animal kingdom. I mean, orcas kills everything that swims. Whales, sharks, moose. Human can smell geosmin better than shark can smell blood in the water. Geosmin is the part of the petrichor that some people can smell a mile away before the rain even starts. Yes, this is the compound that gives off that unique smell of rain. Like, it's quite surprising, but humans descended from water dwellers and we're still good with water. You can even hear the difference between cold water and hot water. Go try this yourself, and once you're done, just tap on the glass of water, and you can even tell the difference between hot and cold water in a cup. These are almonds, but if you call them nuts, then you'd be wrong, because these things are from the peach family. Lots of people call them nuts, but they're actually seeds inside of a hard fruit. They're peaches. And inside the hard sand of the peach seed, there's a seed very similar to almonds, but with higher levels of cyanide. That's poisonous, by the way. And almonds and peaches are the same kind of fruit as coffee. They're called stone fruits. Speaking of weird groupings of plants, pistachios, cashews, and mangoes are in the same group as poison ivy. You know, the scratchy itchy plant. Depending on how sensitive you are, mango skin can give you mango mouth rash and cashews can also give you itchy butthole. And speaking of butthole, I'm just gonna put this out there. Some tortoises can breathe through their buttholes. Yeah, and that's not all. Some small mammals can even be forced to breathe through enemas too. Just shove them out and pump them in. There's an active scientific research on this in the hope that one day the technology can be transferred to human beings so that even you can one day be able to breathe through your butthole. You know, just in case. Just imagine you got into an accident and, and the paramedic decided that you can't breathe and shove this up your butthole so you can breathe. Be grateful. The northernmost point in Brazil is closer to Canada than it is to the southernmost point in Brazil. I know, this is kind of hard to wrap your brain around. It just shows how bad is the Mercator prediction has warped the geographical mind of irregular people. Here's another. The westernmost point of China is closer to Germany than to the easternmost point of China. With this distance, it's mind-blowing that China uses a single time zone. <laughs> that means when you're in Shanghai and you're making a call to Urumqi at 11 a.m., it'll still be dark on the other end of the line. And you think Kylie Jenner taking 70-minute flight was bad? Elon Musk took what is supposed to be a 10-minute drive between LAX and Hawthorne by plane. But that's nothing compared to the shortest commercial flight in the world, which takes 57 seconds with a distance of less than the length of the runway at Heathrow. This Logan Air flight between Westray and Papa Westray Island is quite necessary though. There are too few people to build bridges and the seas are too rough for ferries. So, 
planes are the only viable option. What's so mind-blowing about modern plane is that the Wright brothers' first flight was 37 meters and the world's biggest plane, the Antonov AN-225 Maria, was 200 feet long or 88 meters wing to wing. The Wright brother flight won't even make it from one end to another. Sharks have existed long before the first tree appeared on Earth. Sharks first appeared 450 million years ago even predating the rings of Saturn, which only formed within the last 100 million years. The last dinosaur was about 65 million years ago, and the dinosaurs roamed the Earth for about 165 million years. There's less time between their extinction to our time than the time they existed on Earth. These days, we rarely get to see mummies, except maybe in museums. But back in the days, oh boy, there's so much mummies that they even used it to fire up the furnace on steam locomotives. They were grinding up these mummies even to make paint or eat them. That's right, people in the Victorian era love this color called mummy brown, and it's literally made up of ground up mummies. They would also sprinkle mummy dust and eat them for the supposed medicinal benefit. They even dipped it in honey and make mummy candies. People are weird. This next thing is the biggest lie of all time. Strawberries aren't berries. Botanists call this a false fruit, a pseudocarp. Do you know what a berry looks like? This thing, banana is a berry. That's right. Bananas develop from a flower with a single ovary and have a soft skin, fleshy middle, and small seeds, which is what a berry is. But you don't call this a banana berry, do we? We seriously need to rename a lot of fruits. So tell me, what is the tallest mountain when measured from the center of the earth? If you say Everest, then you're wrong. Stupid! It's actually Chimborazo in Ecuador because it's located near the equator where the Earth bulges out a bit due to centrifugal force. It also means you will weigh the least when you're standing on top of the mountain on Earth. But Mount Chimborazo is only 6,263 meters tall at the peak. Why is that? Well, let's find out. The usual answer, Everest, is only true as the highest mountain on Earth when you measure from the average sea level to the top of Mount Everest at 8,848 meters. If you measure from the base of a mountain to the peak, none of these mountains came close to Mount Kea at 10,210 meters. All of these mountains seem so high, but if you shrunk the Earth to about the size of an apple, it'll be smoother than any billiard ball that any engineers can produce. Also, you'd be responsible for killing more people than anybody in history. When you lump them all together, the number of ants on Earth has a mass greater than all birds and mammals combined. Like, they outnumber us by 2.5 million ants for every human on Earth. And humans are really good at decimating entire ecosystems by cooking. We did it to the lobsters, and we still continue to overfish the ocean. Maybe it's time for some of you to start some movement to eat ants, will you? I mean, in Myanmar and Thailand, they're using ants as condiments. Australians use honey ants as sweeteners and ate green ants as traditional food. All right, it's time to talk about boobies and tits, but we need to start with the lion, which is the national animal of the United Kingdom, the sworn enemy of the unicorn, and they both appear on the coat of arms, even though the Red Bull is the sworn enemy of the last unicorn. There are people who believe that unicorn is real, but even though a narwhal is real, there are still a lot of people who refuse to believe that they are real. <laughs> people are just weird, man. The natural world is full of weird animals, such as the blue-footed booby, Sula Nebuxi, and <laughs> they are real boobs, I mean it's in their name. And not to mention the great tits of Paris Major. Speaking of boobs and titties, there's also brown-footed boobies, genetically similar to the blue-footed titties, <laughs> I mean boobies, but they jiggle different so they won't mate with one another. There's also the red-footed boobies, but we shan't speak about them. Ah, the Sahara. The largest desert in the world. WRONG! It's so stupid! The Sahara is not the largest desert in the world. It's not even the second largest desert in the world. Do you know why? Deserts are not defined by high temperature and sand dunes, 
but by low precipitation, the lack of water in the air and on the ground. One way to remove water is to heat it up. Another way is to lower it to freezing. Yes, the second largest desert in the world is the Arctic, which makes the largest desert in the world to be the Antarctic. The low temperature has frozen water out of the air and the same dangers that people face in the desert, such as sunburn, dry lips, dehydration, barren landscapes, also challenges those who dare to step into the Arctic. Ho, ho, ho. You just don't want to mess with the big guy. Anyway, humans are the best long distance runner in the animal kingdom. We may not be the fastest nor the strongest, but humans are excellent endurance athletes. Or at least we were. Anyway, some African community is said to still hunt animals just by following them to exhaustion. It's called persistence hunting. But all of this is more of a hypothesis than any proven anthropological fact. Rather than chasing animals to exhaustion, early humans would just simply outsmart them and craft weapons and tools to hunt them down. And when people would want to go far, we'd just ride our horses, which are much better endurance runners than any humans ever. Looking at you, pity the peas. In Avengers Infinity War, Thanos realized that because the universe resource is finite, you don't know that! We will greedily deplete our natural resources and cause widespread death and famine. And instead of snapping his finger, generate infinite resources, he chose to have the number of living beings instead. But here's the thing. There's enough resources to go around for everyone. We actually have more than enough food to end world hunger right now, today. The issue is with distribution. And I don't just mean shipping things around the world. We are really good with that. But by making people have to pay for market price for these resources, it burdens the less financially capable more compared to those with unlimited resources. The wealthy would then be able to divert resources on a whim to serve their own financial benefits. And on top of that, government leadership are exploiting this market behavior for their own benefit, resulting in people exploiting those who are less capable to determine their own fate. Despite popularly supported food and clothing aid being shipped to less fortunate countries, large amounts of food are being left to rot on the tarmac. Food have even intentionally been disposed on an industrial level to create artificial inflation. And donated used clothing are then sold to decimate the local producers. Thanos was an idiot. But it doesn't mean that growing food is easy. Take pineapples. It takes three years for pineapples to grow. Well, not exactly. Planting from scratch takes three years to grow the plant and finally get the fruit to ripen. This is why commercial pineapples are grown from pups from the base of the plant. It'll then take a year to grow the fruit, but we're not done yet. Take the pineapple before it's ripe, it would stop ripening. You will have to wait another four to eight months for it to ripe, depending on variety. Vanilla is an orchid, and it takes 12 years to mature, and the resulting beans make up for the most basic flavor you can think of. But the plant itself is quite exotic, which means it takes a lot of effort to take care of it. It has to be fertilized by hand because the vanilla orchid bee is critically endangered. The pollination method of this vining orchid was invented by a slave in the 19th century when the plant was taken from its origin in Mexico to Madagascar, where the best vanilla is still produced to this day. And they still cost quite a lot of money to buy, which is why artificial vanilla, which is a lot more economical, sees a more widespread usage. It's made out of petroleum distillate, and most people can't tell the difference from the real deal. When the plant is mature, you don't get the beans willy-nilly either. It takes about a year for vanilla to ripen, and about another year and a half to dry them out. Which is why if you find some store that carries some cheap vanilla, you better be sure of what you're doing. We don't make too much of these things either. If the yearly output of vanilla on earth was gathered in one place, it would only fill about a quarter of an average US mall. Porcupines, not hedgehog, are really good climbers. They like to eat tree buds and shoots on top of trees, especially in winter. They even sleep in tree trunks. And ducks at the pond are free, and it's perfectly okay to feed them bread. Thing is, 
Just like humans, there are more nutritious food than bread. Social media has turned this into bread is poison, resulting in people stopped feeding ducks and it even led to a decline in their population. Many municipalities even started putting up signs to tell people that it's okay to feed the ducks some bread. Are tomatoes fruit or vegetable? Well, vegetable is a culinary term for savory fruit or tubers or leaves and it has never been rigidly defined, you know. You know what they say, baking is science, but cooking, that's art. This is how we got people calling tomatoes as vegetable when they would cut up the fruit and use it as vegetable in cooking. The distinction is when you jump over from cooking to botany. There's the botanical term fruit and also its culinary context. While there are some overlap, they are not the same. And it's not just exclusive to tomatoes. Even pumpkins and zucchinis are fruit, but that's in botanical context. If you're having trouble classifying pumpkins as either vegetable or fruit, that's because pumpkins are actually classified as a Halloween. If you're talking about cooking, tomatoes are vegetables. As the old saying goes, intelligence is knowing tomatoes are fruit, wisdom is knowing not to put it in your fruit salad. Speaking of fruits, the reason why there's so many grape flavored drinks in the US while Europe only has so very few of them is that because black currants have been banned in the US. When the United States put in grape flavoring in their drinks, they use black currants. While the United States put in grape flavorings in their drinks, in Europe they use black currants. Like the purple Skittles, in Europe they'd be black currant flavored. But in America, the purple ones are actually grape flavored. The situation is so bad that a lot of Americans are just so unfamiliar with how blackcurrant actually tastes like that there's basically no market for blackcurrant flavored foods in the US. This is because blackcurrant plants carry white pine blizzard dust fungus, Cornartium rubicola, that is deadly to pine trees, resulting in a federal ban to protect the pine trees crucial for the logging industry. It was so bad that the western white pine was nearly wiped out by this fungus. Although the federal ban has been lifted, there are still many states that banned them. Speaking of time, there was more time between the building of the Great Pyramids and Cleopatra, about 2,510 years, than there is time between Cleopatra and today, which is about 461 years. That's almost five times longer. It's so long ago that the redwood forests on the west coast did not exist when they were building the Pyramids of Giza. Back then, the Cascades were primarily oak and ponderosa pine. Going back in time, it was 85 million years between the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus and the T-Rex went extinct 65 million years ago. That's right, the T-Rex was closer to humans than the Stegosaurus. Things are so different back then that grass only showed up in the time of the T-Rex, that is, the late Cretaceous period in the same geological epoch as true birds. So, birds are older than grass, crocodilians are older than dinosaurs, and sharks are older than trees. And the remains of the oldest trees still exist to this day, because for millions of years after the trees appeared, there were no bacteria to decompose dead trees. So instead of rotting, the wood would just pile up and this is where we get coal from in coal mines. The dead wood gets compressed and over time turned into coal. It would be really something to walk around in the forest to see dead trees laying about and none of them rotting. You can even see the hobbitses running around there. But trees aren't the only thing that's been around since time immemorial. Their existence was a mere blink of an eye when you recall that water has been on earth since the beginning. We're still drinking, swimming, and enjoying the same water that the dinosaurs and our ancestors drank, bathed, swam, and enjoyed. Well, some of us do, and we're the privileged few only notice when things don't work, when water turns bad, when trains are late, when it rains more often than it is in actuality. I just want to say that even though you see it on a YouTube video, it doesn't mean it's true. Just lie? You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Yes, 
And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It'll make me very happy.